Hey guys, Ronnie here from Cold Blood Creations and in this video we're going to cover egg laying and we're going to hopefully share with you some of the things that we uh, look for and some of the things that we do when it comes to breeding our snakes and particularly when we're dealing with those animals that are egg layers. Now, one of the things that you may wonder is how do we know when any of our snakes are gravid? Now, for those of you who don't know already, the word gravid simply means pregnant in the reptile world. So if we have a pregnant or a gravid snake, uh, people want to know how do you know when they are gravid? Well, what we generally do is we take very detailed notes. When we introduce a male and a female together during the breeding season, we record the date that we actually see them copulate. Once copulation takes place, we record that day, and from that day until they're ready to lay their eggs, generally speaking, is about 39 days. Sometimes it can be a little shorter, sometimes it's a little longer, but generally speaking, we're, we're dealing with about 39 days from the actual mating until the egg laying. Roughly about 30 days, what you'll find is a pre-egg laying shed. In other words, a female snake, she'll shed her skin uh, generally, it's about 5 to 14 days before she lays her eggs, she'll go through a shed cycle. So when we're looking for eggs, the first thing we look for when we open a female's cage is we look for this right here. We look for a recently shed skin, like this female king snake here, recently shed her skin. So we'll take the shed out, we remove it, and then we put a box in what we call an egg laying box or a nesting box. And basically all that is, we use and we use various sizes depending on the snakes that we're dealing with. We use a basically a plastic box. We put a hole in it for access. Sometimes we do it in the lid. Sometimes we do it in the size of the box, uh, in the sides like this. And then we use a product called sphagnum moss. Now you can buy this product basically anywhere. You can buy it at Walmart, Lowe's, uh, any of the home improvement big box stores. And we put the sphagnum moss into the box here. We usually do this when we see their eyes getting cloudy and we know they're going into their pre-egg laying shed. We'll put the box in here, we'll put the sphagnum moss in here. Now one of the things this also does, it helps the snake to shed its skin. They can lay in here. We moisten this and you don't want it muddy, you don't want it sloppy wet, but just moist enough that it kind of clumps together a little bit, but it's still really light. You can feel the moisture to the touch. and. Um, the snake can crawl in here and the moisture of the sphagnum moss will actually help them shed their skin. And then from the time they shed, like we said, about roughly five to 14 days later, the snake will find this box, crawl into the hole, lay in this nice moistened sphagnum moss, and generally that's where they lay their eggs. Now, something that we might want to mention, in some of our snake cages we use large water bowls. When we know that a female is getting ready to shed her skin and to lay her eggs, we take out the large water bowl and we replace it with a small water dish like this. And the reason why we do that is if she decides to lay her eggs and any of her eggs fall in the water bowl and we don't find them for a while, those eggs would drown. So we put a small water container in there so it's, she can't crawl into it. And if she did accidentally lay an egg in the water bowl, the egg wouldn't drown before we get to it. So just to give you a little review of what we talked about, once our snakes, we have seen them breed, we record the date from the breeding to the egg laying roughly about 39 days. Again, sometimes shorter, sometimes a little more. Um, we put the egg box in when we see the female's eyes get cloudy. We know she's about to have her pre-egg laying shed. Then we place the egg box in there. Once she sheds her skin, five to 14 days later, and sometimes it can go more. If you have a snake that goes 17 to 18 days, don't panic. They'll lay their eggs when they're ready to lay um, unless you're dealing with a problem of egg binding, which uh, we'll cover in another video. But um, that's the way we do it. And then we like to incubate our eggs in a material called vermiculite, and we'll show you that here in just a moment. So after our snakes have laid their eggs in the sphagnum moss, we have to incubate those eggs. And the medium that we like to incubate our eggs in is called vermiculite. Now, I like vermiculite because you can actually bury the eggs down into the substrate and allow them to, uh, to incubate. So what we, what we use for incubating our eggs, I like to use these little sterilite tubs. They have the lids on them. You can put the lid on them and snap them. We put some holes in the sides so the air can circulate through here. 
And the way we set this up with our vermiculite, first thing you're going to need is a gram scale, something like this, uh, that can be zeroed out. It's called being able to tear your scale. And then we put something to mix in on here. And we want to zero that out because we don't want to measure the weight of the actual mixing cup. So we zero our scale out to zero grams. Now, in order to put enough uh, vermiculite in this tub right here to incubate a clutch of eggs, I'm going to just guesstimate about 100 grams of vermiculite. So we start adding the dry vermiculite into our mixing container here. And there's different ratios for how to mix this stuff depending on what exactly you're trying to accomplish. Different eggs require different moisture. Uh, we're going to be doing king snake eggs and generally speaking they recommend a one to one ratio for this. Now I don't like quite that much moisture because living in southern Georgia we have enough humidity in the air here already. So I'm going to go a little bit less than a one to one but what we want to do, Anna will you grab me some water real quick. What we want to do now, we've got 100 grams of vermiculite in our mixing container. Now we're going to zero our scale out again. And uh, Aubrey, if you'll film this right here where they can see what we're doing, I'm just going to pour some water into the vermiculite here. And it doesn't matter. You can pour it right in the middle. It really doesn't matter. And what I want to do is get close to 100, but not quite. All right, so we're getting close there, and um, we're at about 97%. We're not quite at 100, not quite on 96, 96 grams. And then we're just going to mix this up. And what you want to look for is as you get all this mixed together, mix it up really good, it'll clump together. Now, you don't want it sopping wet. If you was to do a lot more... Uh, grams of water what happens is this vermiculite will take on almost a muddy uh, look you want it to um, actually as you're mixing it and I think I'd be better off to do this by hand as you get your hands down in here what you want to look for is that when you take the vermiculite and squeeze it it'll actually clump together it's not sopping wet but yet it's moist enough that it'll hold some humidity and then we're just going to mix this up really, really good. You'd be surprised at how, how well just a little amount of water will work. And then what we're going to do is pour it into our container here that we're going to incubate our eggs in. Just a little bit down here in the bottom. And we don't want to get it so full that we cover up our air holes. We probably didn't need quite that much, but we've got more than one clutch of eggs being laid. So um, we want to give our air holes the ability. You don't want to put your vermiculite all the way up to the top because then that would defeat the purpose of having your air holes. So leave it down enough so that you can still get good airflow. And now you can take your eggs as they're laid, put them into the vermiculite and incubate them in this container. Come on in here, I got something I want to show you real quick. And uh, this is actually something we found this morning. We come in here, and if you'll notice here, this is one of our, oh, I don't want to bounce around too much. This is one of our king snakes. This is a desert king. And this young female has just laid her first egg and uh, we don't know how many she's going to lay. We're, uh, we're anxiously awaiting, but we are thankful she has laid her first one here. So I'm going to put the top back on. We don't want to disturb them too much. We'll come back in from time to time, and um, we'll check on her. We'll see how she's doing, and um, we'll keep you updated as far as how many eggs she lays. Now, by the way, those of you guys who know about our Facebook page, our Facebook page is called Cold Blood Creations. Uh, we often do some contests on here where we'll post the first egg that the snake lays and then we'll do a contest for uh, who can guess the correct number of eggs that our snakes will lay. Usually we give out uh, some of our reptile leather and um, jewelry or some of our products like keychains or whatever. So if you guys haven't yet, go to our Facebook page, Cold Blood Creation, and give us a like. 
and uh, join in on the contest. Hey guys, we just finished up. Um, looks like a little lady here is through laying her eggs and uh, she is extremely, extremely skinny after laying the eggs that she did. So we're going to put her back in a cage here and we're going to offer her something to eat here in just a few minutes. We, uh, we always like to feed our snakes right after they get through laying their eggs, just to put a little weight back on the mothers because it takes so much out of them to, to produce a clutch of eggs. But anyway, I want to show you this real quick. I've already separated them. We've got them in our vermiculite like we told you about earlier in the video. I put a little cup of water in here just to keep the humidity up. And uh, we're going to uh, put the cover on this. And by the way, our winner of our contest on Facebook, Jimmy Guess, you're our winner with five eggs, Guess. Congratulations, sir. We'll get a keychain out to you shortly. Thank you guys for watching Cold Blood Fish. What this world needs is a few more red dead. So people ain't afraid.